I'm Randy Ritchie. This is Women Wrestlers You Should Know, celebrating Women's History Month. And this is brought to you commercial free and YouTube ad free by Premier Pro Wrestling. So please like and subscribe and peruse the links in the description to uh, help us keep the doors open and bringing you cool content like our matches and things like this series, Women Wrestlers You Should Know. And you really should know if you don't know, Rhonda Singh. In Japan, she was Monster Ripper. In Puerto Rico, she was Monster Ripper. In Mexico, she was Monster Ripper. This girl grew up a wrestling fan. Her mother said that she was only five years old when she grew up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and she was putting her classmates in holds and making them submit via her favorite wrestlers, all of the hearts, who she went to high school with, Owen and Brett, and after she got into the wrestling industry, she became, and I could see this really being a cool relationship, friends with Owen Hart. So, Rhonda tried to, of course, learn how to wrestle in uh, the Hart family's dungeon, Stu Hart's dungeon. The internet said, and it was probably Meltzer and those dickheads, that they said, no, we don't train women. Bret Hart says, that's not true. The only reason we didn't break her in and train Rhonda is because the guys that were around and able to still train had full-time jobs in pro wrestling, and it was just a scheduling conflict. She went out to train on the West Coast. I forget for whom, but I'm sure we'll look into who trained her out on the West Coast. Mildred something, and we'll probably end up uh, commemorating or honoring her. Rhonda took that gamble. She went out there, and she was only training for eight weeks when I believe it was all Japan started to scout female wrestlers because back 30 years ago, if you can, if you even YouTube it, you know, period, or check the annals, they did with women wrestling what World Wrestling Entertainment is doing today. What, in fact, Dutch Mantel and I incepted with the TNA knockouts, man. Women athletes, women that could wrestle. And Rhonda Singh got brought out there, and from what I understand with that Japanese training, especially then, she paid dues, unfortunately dues that you can't pay anymore today. But right from the get-go, because of her athleticism and her size... She was a huge star, and the Monster Ripper was a legend in Japan. Then she would tour inside of Japan and Puerto Rico, and I know from a fact from my contacts in Puerto Rico that she really meant something in Puerto Rico as the Monster Ripper. And then I believe the first and oldest lucha company in Mexico was EMLL, and she also competed there before... She got brought in Rhonda Singh to work at World Wrestling Entertainment at the behest, is that the proper word, at the behest? The suggestion of Medusa Michelli, who crossed paths with Rhonda over to Japan, over in Japan, and they're very like-minded, these two, as far as driving, being really strong women. They had some great matches over there. Medusa had her brought into World Wrestling Federation when Medusa was trying to do what they're doing today, and that's bring female wrestling out of the dark ages. Yes, it was a male-dominated industry, and yes, it was thought up to that point that women and midgets in wrestling were good to have on the card once in a while for entertainment purposes, okay? So look back then and look now, and you really got to recognize, I mean recognize the Medusa Michelli's and Rhonda Sings. Now, the thing with World Wrestling Entertainment is they give Vince McMahon a lot of flack for his ideas. 
without thinking of what's really going on behind the scenes. And if I may, if you look at when Vince is focusing on something else, meaning the wrestling company is working and it's doing good, and it's almost to the point where you can't screw it up too badly in his absence or if he only has half of his energy to put into it because he's trying to focus on, let's say, the XFL, which he did twice. Let's say the World Bodybuilding, when he wanted to get bodybuilders paid and make it a professional sport. He'll let other people run it for him. So that being said, the agents that Vince had, a lot of people don't know this, were seven guys that were devout performers of Vince McMahon Sr. When Vince Jr. bought the company, part of that verbal agreement, part of the agreement in writing, was he was to keep these seven individuals around until they decided to retire. A lot of these individuals, I'm going to go ahead and say three out of the seven individuals, weren't just, you know, acquaintances of mine. They were good friends of mine. They were talented, talented guys, but they couldn't wrap their heads around the fact that women in wrestling could be, quote, end quote, believable. So while Vince is looking the other way on something, he's still got his finger on a pulse, but he's not paying attention, obsessing like he does, which is what's made the WWF and the WWE what they are today they decided to come up with different storylines. And when Ronda Singh came in there, Medusa had the idea of them having the same kind of matches in a storyline that would have lasted a long time with Ronda. However, Medusa bailed out to get some cosmetic surgery done. And during that time frame in the mid-90s, those guys that I'm talking about sold Vince on making Rhonda sing what a lot of people considered a joke as Bertha Faye. And Bertha Faye was a female wrestler managed by my f- old friend, downtown Bruno, another brother from the Memphis territory where he cut his teeth. And it was kind of clowned up, if you know what I'm talking about. Now, the internet marks, the smarks, really blow my mind. I would love to see these adult internet smarks and the way they used to shred Rhonda Singh back then when she was Bertha Fay, or shred Rhonda Singh when she had gained all that weight versus the 10 years later when they say, oh, poor Bertha had to put up with that stupid wrestling gimmick. It just blows my mind. If you guys could go back and see what you said 10 years ago online when it was one wrestling and woo wrestling and dog fart wrestling, you know. I always saw tremendous money in Ronda Singh. And that was before I knew of her international background. I'd only seen the girl work a few times at the time And I was like, son of a bitch, she's the most believable woman I've ever seen in pro wrestling. Now, she did gain weight. And that's why the internet wrestling fan used to goof on her. I know what I know. And I have a friend, she's probably my oldest friend that I've known since she was 15, 16 years old. So we've got to be friends at least 40-something years. She has some health issues. And one of them is lupus, and there's a couple of other blood disorders. Nothing that's fatal. But because of these blood disorders and her health issues, she barely eats, but she appears to be overweight, and it's got nothing to do with nothing other than genes and bloating from these blood issues and regulating the medications. Now, bear that in mind when we get to the end of Rhonda's story. So... One of the things that happened in World Wrestling Entertainment at the time, and this is why I just love and respect the shit out of girls like Rhonda Singh, is that she wasn't allowed to do her move set because the guys on the roster were doing those move sets, which is ridiculous. I know as a promoter today, when I have women on the card, I know they can do those moves, and the moves are done differently, and the fans don't know what hit them. I've seen it a thousand times, and I've sold it to the guys and the girls on the card and say, see, yours got as big of a crowd reaction as theirs did. 
It's in the brain. And when people are watching, they don't realize that they've seen it yet because they saw it out of a woman, which was different than seeing it out of a man. If anything, that gets that female over like Rhonda Singh in so far as believability goes. Now let's talk about believability for a moment. I will guarantee to you that in Japan, in the United States, in Mexico, or Puerto Rico, there is nobody in the locker room, but especially in that crowd that didn't think they could go into that ring and fight Rhonda Singh and not get their ass handed to them. That's how believable this girl was. So, in regards to this Bertha Faye stuff, it's rumored that her and downtown Bruno didn't get along when they were married to that gimmick for a year, year and a half. I find that hard to believe. I know Bruno, and Bruno also is depicted as what I'm about to tell you. World Wrestling Entertainment and wrestlers on the roster back then said that Ronda was infectious, lively, and she had a blast doing that Bertha Faye character. The other thing I want you guys to pay attention to is wrestling is, was, and always will be in part based on pop culture, i.e. the head of the table, Roman Reigns. He looks like that guy from Spider-Man, not Spider-Man, Aquaman, uh, Momoa, Momoa. Therefore, people are buying him, especially the mainstream wrestling fan. Well, at this time, Roseanne Barr was an enormous star with enormous controversy surrounding her when to, uh, from when she, in particular one instance, she sang the national anthem. She sang like, sung like shit. So in the process of being insecure and knowing she sung like shit, she made a joke out of it. And everybody turned on her back then. And she had this relationship with Tom Arnold. Roseanne was a big girl, but the TV show was undeniable and one of the most successful and probably the most successful television program in the 90s at the time. And it was rumored and probably true as it all came out when they finally got divorced. Tom Arnold married Roseanne Barr and used her for her money and to get the rub in Hollywood. That's what they were depicting with Rhonda Singh and Downtown Bruno or Harvey Whippleman, as you guys might know them. So no, it wasn't some sort of dig, let's make fun of the fat girl. And if you look at the picture of Rhonda Singh, she looks like Roseanne Barr's cousin. So it made absolute sense. Rhonda Singh was one of the first wrestlers, male or female, to use the power bomb, which everybody loves to use today, you know, and uh, she fought like hell, like I said again in Japan, just to train. Now that being said, I know by checking on this girl with the weight gain or the perceived weight gain or the water weight as she got older, and I'm not talking about older because God bless her, she never got a chance to get old. As Rhonda Singh died from, they say, a heart attack or heart issues, and I'm going with what her family says. She had medical issues, but she died at the age of 40. I'm going to go ahead and believe that she probably stopped wrestling because, like I said, this is a girl who loved wrestling so much she was making her kindergarten or classmates submit in the it, before she even got into first grade. The year before she passed, she became a caregiver for special needs young people, which that should tell us all something about Rhonda Singh. And then she died without a lot of controversy at 40 years old. Again, I'm going to point out to her to what pertains to me and the people that would probably listen to this short. When you want something bad enough, you'll do whatever it takes like Rhonda Singh did to get that. I don't care if you're aspiring to be a wrestler, if you're aspiring to work for World Entertainment in the office and creative and production or any other industry. You've got to work hard. You have to become undeniable, which Rhonda Singh did. And if you stay consistent... Your time will come. And that's what 
infuriates me about this industry today is all these idiots out there thinking that they're going to come up with some sort of high spot or move or some bullshit ass kiss and political move that's going to get them hired. That's not what's going to happen. The way you get hired is the way Rhonda Singh got hired. She became undeniable and eventually World Wrestling Entertainment, World Wrestling Federation heard about her. The rest is history and again, she should be honored. I was looking forward to uh, to, uh, to 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 looking into Rhonda's past because I've always been fascinated with her. In closing, at one point, my little company, which was called the North American Wrestling Federation, which is now Premier Pro Wrestling, had on the table a contract to be a developmental territory for WCW at its close. Rhonda Singh was one of the last compelling things at WCW. So, of course, I made inquiries about bringing her in, and I thought about this in the late 90s, probably 99, maybe 2000, that, man, I want to bring her in, and I really want to see her feud with guys because she could take my young talent and really teach them something, especially the Japanese style, which this girl mastered. Again, folks, this is women wrestlers you should know. Please be cool and at least like and subscribe. And if you would be so kind, check out the links in the description to support Premier Pro Wrestling, our project, Premier Pro Wrestling and Pro Wrestling Tees. And about 500 matches, Premier Pro Wrestling on Patreon, which, uh, you know, are exclusive on our Patreon. Thanks. We'll talk tomorrow.